Are you looking for inspiration on a daily basis? Well, check out Deal to Heal Teas. With our inspirational teas, you're sure to find something that will inspire you. Just go to deal to heal teas.myshopify.com. That's deal to heal teas. Put some inspiration in your situation. Wear inspirational tea and be inspired all day. That's deal to heal teas at deal to heal teas.myshopify.com. Hey guys. This is Ernest James, host of the Deal to Heal with E. James podcast. And I got a question to ask you. Could you buy me a cheeseburger? Better yet, could you buy me a value meal? Yes? Well, guess what? I don't need a value meal. However, for the cost of a value meal, you can support this podcast to keep us on the air. Just go to Patreon slash Deal to Heal podcast and choose any one of the three tiers that's available. And if you just want to make a one-time donation, go to Cash App. And make a donation to dollar sign E James, the number 418. Make a one time donation to the Cash App, or again, go to Patreon to support this podcast and keep us on the air. Thanks in advance. Be blessed. Welcome to Deal to Heal with E. James Podcast. On this podcast, my guest and I will discuss topics and ways to help us to heal in every area of our lives. I believe that everyone can live a life that is happy, healthy, and whole. So I'm on a mission to help people to deal, heal, and fulfill. Deal with your problem, heal from the pain, and fulfill your purpose. Thanks for tuning in. Let's get to it. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Deal to Heal with E. James podcast. I'm your host, Ernest James, and I believe that everyone can live a life that is whole, healed, and healthy. And therefore, I'm on a mission to help people to deal, heal, and fulfill. Deal with your problems, heal from the pain, and fulfill your purpose. Thank you guys once again for uh, tuning in to the Deal to Heal with E. James podcast. Um, If you haven't already, please... Uh, subscribe, listen, like, subscribe, and share. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, our Facebook page, and our um, podcast audio podcast on Spotify or your podcast listening um, uh, distribution uh, spaces, <laughs> whatever it's called. <laughs> but we thank you guys for being here. Uh, make sure you guys listen until the end. I'll tell you guys how you can win $100 from the podcast. Um, but we're going to jump right into it today. Just like any other day, we are blessed with a guest, Mr. Rando. How are you doing today? I am doing well, sir. Thank you for having me on your show. No problem. No problem. First of all, let me start by saying thank you for being here. You could have been doing anything else, um, but you took out time to be here with me and my listeners, and I definitely appreciate it. My pleasure. All right. All right. So let's jump right into it, Mr. Randall. First of all, don't you uh, tell my listeners who you are and what it is that you do. Absolutely. I'm a native New Yorker now living in Burlington, New Jersey. I am the founder of an organization called the Breakfast with Our Boys series. We're a nonprofit and award-winning interactive program for young men aged 10 to 15 years of age. I'm also a co-author of the book, Suited for Success, a two-time Amazon best-selling book. And I also do work with the Father City of New Jersey in South Jersey, providing free resources for men so that way they could be self-sufficient and better fathers. Okay, all right. Well, you, we, we uh, gotta jump right in it then. So you, you started off by, by mentioning the the organization for the the young boys. So tell us a little bit more about the organization and the work that you do do there. And then even give us a little backstory on how you even came to start that. Well, Breakfast with Our Boys was started in 2019, actually in January. We're an award-winning interactive program serving young men ages 10 to 15 years of age. We have a New York City chapter as well as one in Burlington, New York. I mean, Burlington, New Jersey. 
And we love what we do because we found that even if it's a two family household, a lot of times some of the things men need to learn to you to do isn't taught at home. So some of the topics we talk about are proper dining etiquette, professional presentation, how to tie a tie, buying real estate at a very young age. And the goal is really to have young men get together with guest speakers and talk about those topics we don't talk about very often. Yeah, yeah, and that's good. I like what you said. And one of the things that you you said that I agree with 100% is that, you know, sometimes you, you may come from a two-parent household, um, but you still may be missing some things, you know. And so I, I know before we started recording, we was talking, and I told you that I had started a male mentoring program myself, um, uh, Man Up, which stands for men. Uh, activating newly untapped potential. And one of the things that I do is not only do I try to reach out to um, young men going into adulthood, generally I try to catch them right in the high school years, um, but I also focus on men, uh, young men in their 20s, 30s, you know, who's who's out of high school because what I realize is, you know, you have your your young boys who need guidance, and if they don't get the guidance at that age, then they just become grown men who still need guidance. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. And so I wanted to make sure that, you know, like yourself, one of the things that I did was, you know, try to catch them young, but just in case I don't catch them, then still try to reach out to them, you know, when they get a little older, you know. Um, and, and, I, and I find that, you know, a lot of the things, like you mentioned, some of the, the simple things, or or maybe simple to me because I, I grew up with, you know, that uh, my father in the home and having that influence and, and also uncles and, you know, family members, male family members around to kind of give me that uh, that balance of things that I may have, you know, may have needed to know as a young man. But um, some of the things that you mentioned are even to be able to do as a young man, like tie a tie. You know what I mean? Uh, um, you know what it means to dress up, how to dress successful, successfully. You know those things are not all the time talked about because a lot of times we focus so much on the 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 far end of the spectrum as far as the dramatic stuff. Like if you don't have your father, then you end up in drugs and gains, and you know what I'm right, saying. Right, but, right. Okay, what about those who didn't go that far, but they just need still need a little guidance and a little something to do, you know, learn a little something. And so you mentioned about your book, uh, Suited for Success. So tell us a little bit about that. Well, the book uh, came about from a gentleman by the name of P.K. Kersey that has an organization called That Suits You. He followed me on social media. He liked the positive things I was doing, and he asked me to join. And what happened was I was writing my own book. And when he approached me, he said, look, I'm doing an anthology. I want 25 men to tell their story of what they went through, what they learned, and how it made you the man you are today. So in the first book, I talked about uh, growing up with my mother who suffered from mental illness. She was diagnosed as paranoid schizophrenic. And the second book, I talked about really growing up without my dad, um, hating him and being angry of him not being in my life. But after the age of 40, we reconciled, had a relationship up until he passed. And the name of that, my story is, it's not too late. And talk about you can heal, things can get better, no matter how bad it is, even if you don't believe it can. So so the book has is a multiple authors? Yes, it's sir. Okay. It's multiple authors, actually 25 in both books. And the idea was just to have different stories. And the funny thing is, initially, I wasn't going to do it because I wanted to do my own book. But I always tell people, when God gives you an opportunity, it may look like garbage, but it could be gold. Because if I had not taken, been humble enough to be part of this, I can say till the day I die, I'm a two-time Amazon best-selling author. And I say that not to brag, but to share the story that sometimes you have to listen to the spirit and things you hear to go in the right direction. Definitely, definitely. And you know what? That... Uh... <laughs> I definitely agree with you that because uh, a while back, you know, God gave me this quote, uh, even that that's kind of what led me to here. Right. And it was that pain births purpose, purpose births progress and progress is the evidence that God is at work. Well, right? let me tell you, I love your T-shirts. I love the statement. I'm over here smiling 
because it's so original, but yet, Mr. James, it's so true. Yeah, yeah, and and I know it to be true even in my own life because, like I said, even that what led me to here was you know some pain that I had, and I stepped out and started the uh, Friends of Fatherless Daughters page, and that kind of went you know, took off on his own, uh, like I mentioned before, because that wasn't even my original platform on Instagram, you know, but it took off. And so, you know, like the quote that God gave me, it was like, you know, uh, progress is the evidence that God is at work. And so I went with where the progress was. And that, I've been progressing ever since. And that led me to here. So, you know, led us to having this conversation. So and I, I think definitely wonderful. agree with you. No problem. Thank you. Thank you. I, I appreciate it. And I, I want to go back a, a little bit to what you said, because you just mentioned two things. Uh, you mentioned, you know, your mom, growing up with your mom who had some mental illness and growing up without your dad until, you know, later on in, in your life. And so I know those are two major uh, situations, you know, two major obstacles, you know, to deal with, you know, in, in your lifetime. Um, so definitely I, I understand that you will have some, uh, experience, you know, more so than to some other people by overcoming some, some obstacles in your life, you know, because those are two obstacles. One with the, the father not being in the home and, and being absent, which is, you know, not unheard of, but on the other hand, dealing with a mom who, from my understanding, probably was your main you know, source of, uh, of of parenting, you know, and then have to, to deal with her with having, you know, mental illness. So talk to us a little bit about, you know, what it takes and, and the lessons that you've learned to just to be able to overcome, you know, some of the things in your life that you've, you've you know, dealt, had to deal with. Well, one of the things I always talk about it is the fact that being homeless was the best thing that happened to me as a child growing up. Uh, that and my mother suffering from mental illness really gave me a kindness and an understanding about life. And I realized that material things are not that important. It also set me on path to be a leader. Uh, it set me on the path to be more empathetic toward people and understanding. And I'm never afraid. So when I say I'm never afraid, I mean, I'm not talking about fear of getting hit by a car, but to speak up and stand up whenever it's necessary, even if it's not popular. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? And so um, having, having said that, you know, I, I can relate because I grew up, it was nine of us uh, with my mom and dad. And we grew up, you know, I don't want to say poor, but we was poor. <laughs> I like that. You want to say poor, but man, we were poor. Right, you know, we low low income. We was no income. Right, right. <laughs> I love it. Point, I love it. <laughs> At some points, you know, uh, my dad, my mom worked in the church. In the church, uh, she worked with the ministry, uh, which I always didn't pay. You know, it was more voluntary. My dad was a mechanic, so he did work, you know, out of his garage and whatever. But you know, um, sometimes how business is when you when you know people. And, you know, you're, you're working with people and it's okay, fix this for me now and I'll pay you later. And then, yeah, oh, you yeah. Know, I owe you, you know, and all of that. So we had some, we had some scarcity, you know, growing up. Um, but my family, especially amongst our siblings, we always say one of the best things that happened to us um, was that, that time period, that struggle period, because it was during that time that we learned some of our best lessons, um, especially as being a family, because it was during those times that my mom taught us about, you know, sticking together, you know, loving each other. And, you know, we rarely would have, you know, visitors over, you know, so a lot of times it was just us to the point now that as adults, you know, everybody always want to be around us, you know, and then I get mad when we do stuff that is, is just us. Like occasionally we we have, well, one of the things that my mom saw doing, because it was nine of us, we can't have nine birthday parties. You know what I'm oh, saying? Oh, wow. That's yeah, not yeah. a birthday party a year, every month. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. My mom was like, look, that's a birthday party every month plus Christmas. We can't do it. You know what I'm saying? So what she started doing, we started having one, uh, one big birthday party a year. For, we would celebrate wow. everybody's birthday at the same time. 
Um, Very creative. And so we kind of kept doing that over the years. And so now, even though my mom has, has passed away, we still do that, you know, uh, not necessarily a birthday party, but we just have, a, you know, big family get together, you know, every so often. And, and like I said, so people get mad when we do that because they're like, why we weren't invited? Right, you know? right, right. And I always reflect back. I was like, because in those early days, it was just us. Yes. Bro. You know what I mean? And so those those lessons that you learn that, uh, you know, of course, we try to pass those lessons down to our kids, you know, that sometimes life doesn't always go the way we want it to go. You know, um, sometimes we, we have to deal with some situations that are not ideal, you know, but if we stay strong, if we deal with it and hang in there, there's always a blessing on the other end, you know, and, and I've learned that, you know, there's nothing that is all bad or all good. Yes, sir. You know, there's a, there's a, a front and a back to everything. You know, so there's a good and a bad to everything. Even the 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 most uh, things that you would think is a blessing can also be a curse. You know, and, and if we think back to you know even just the lottery, people win the lottery and get millions of dollars, and then don't know how to you know manage it or manage themselves, and end up a lot of them overdose on drugs or you know find themselves in some situations that you know, end up being their downfall where this thing that should have been a blessing, you know, turned out to be a curse and not because it was a thing itself, because the thing itself is just a, a physical thing, but it's the, the mentalness and the, the, uh, the mindset of the person who, you know, achieved or who received this, what should have been considered a blessing, but because their mindset wasn't right, they, you know, it turned out to not to be a blessing. You know, so when when you know we're thinking about or we're talking about the the young men, and I'm I'm guessing that you know some of these young men do come from um, households like yourself where their father was not around. You know, what would be some of those things that you know you would talk to them, and even maybe first let's let's go back, let's go back because you you mentioned that you reconcile with your dad. You know, so I know sometimes you know, those reconnection conversations kind of are kind of hard, you know, and sometimes they go the way you want them to go. <laughs> sometimes they don't, you know, and so I, I run into a lot of people, um, especially on the, on the women's side, when we're dealing with the fatherless daughters who, you know, also on the men's side, but on definitely on the, on the female side with the fatherless daughters, don't really know how to have that conversation you know, um, from the, from the child's perspective, because you do want to know why you weren't there. You do want to know, you know, what happened. You do want to, you know, have that, you know, but sometimes the, the answers that you get may not be <laughs> the answer that you want to hear. So just in your spirit experience, you know, as, as much as you would like to share, what was that conversation like, you know, uh, with your dad? And if you could give, a listener, some pointers on, you know, having that conversation, like, okay, you know, even just the right mindset of, of going into the conversation with. Well, that's a great question. My father never really formally apologized for not being there. Uh, when I started to understand his lifestyle and where he came from, I had a better understanding. He grew up very poor in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, he went to live in Harlem at the age of of 14 and joined the Air Force at 16, but he did take advantage of the things of his time and he went on to get his master's degree. He spoke fluent Spanish. He was a regional commissioner for health, education, and welfare and worked with the mayor and the president. So I know part of my lineage comes from him, but the way he apologized after I became older, after the age of 40, is by reaching out to take me out to dinner by telling me he was proud of me, by saying that, listen, everything you got, you got from your mom. I know I wasn't there. I wasn't the best father, but he never formally apologized because I don't think he knew how. So mm -hmm. dealing in that situation, when I talk to young men without a dad or with limited experience, I really can talk from a place because I'm that kid and I was there. So one of the things I learned to do is, as we all know, forgiveness, because when you forgive, you can move forward. 
And people often say you can't forget. For to me, you have to forget some of it because mm -hmm. the carry around will still keep you bitter. So if you're going to be a spiritual person, true forgiveness is not keeping it in the back of your mind. You may be cautious, but you have to let it go. So we never really sat down to say, hey, son, I'm sorry I wasn't there. But he complimented me all the time of how I spoke and carried myself and my leadership and always said I was just like him. So to me, that was my father's way of apologizing for not being there. Yeah, and it, and it sounds like it because I'm I'm just listening and I'm like, yeah, the the old the old school cats that sound like old you school, know, baby. You're not gonna tell you I'm sorry. My dad, my dad now, uh, we we often joke about it because rarely, rarely does he say I love you, you know. So every now and then, you know, he'll he'll say it, or he might say it to one of us, you know. And so we have a group uh, group chat where we all, you know, keep in contact with each other, the, the siblings, you know. And so like my sister, one of my sisters, he said two more so than the other ones, you know. And so she always says she's his favorite. So if he sent her a text message or something and he put I love you in it, she will post it in the group like dad said I love you to me. You know what I mean? Right, 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 right. <laughs> this is one of those things, you know, you know, he don't say too often, you know. And so I, I and being in that same the same uh, uh, culture of, of men or the same generation of men, you know, just as hard to say, I love you is just as much as hard to say, I'm sorry. You know, it's just one of those it's things exactly. that they, uh, that they don't readily do. I, I, you know, and I guess it was just the way that they were raised back then. Maybe there was a, a um, amount of mental toughness that they felt they had to have at all times, you know, uh, don't show too much emotions, you Racist know what I mean? Stuff they got so, to deal with. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think that was just one of the mechanisms that they needed to be able to face the world. And unfortunately, sometimes they brought that back home. And so, it, it, you know, they didn't really know how to, how to turn it off, you know? Well, so no, they, you know, said kind of, that because my father was a womanizer and I heard the stories and so how he was and, one of the things we talk about with the young men that we are mentoring is we speak a lot about dealing with girls and women in an area of respect as your equal partner, not less than. And we're trying to instill that in young men at a very young age because between social media and influences from, from bad places, you know, young men of color don't respect our women the way they should. You look at the music, you look at the videos, you look at the things that people are doing on social media. So we're really pushing for 2023 in the new year to talk a lot about breaking the stigma and learning to treat women and girls with respect. Yeah, you know, and and, and, I, and I like that. I think uh, I think that's something that's definitely needed, um, especially in this in this day and time. You know, with the young, like you said, because we are so bombarded with with images and ideas um, through social media, through the music, you know, and. If you are a young person that don't have, you know, uh, maybe as much uh, parental guidance as you need, whether from a mother or a father, you know, you, and, and even if you don't, but definitely if you don't, um, they spend a lot of time on social media, you know, and a lot of the things that's posted on social media from adults, we ain't even gonna talk about what's posted from the children, <laughs> the things that's posted from adults, it's just like, really, that's what we putting out? You know what I mean? And so, it is so true of, because nobody taught them at a young age how to properly present themselves with a high level of emotional intelligence. Yeah. Oh, uh, you said it right there. Emotional intelligence. Let's talk about that for a second. So <clears throat> I know for one of the things that I, I talk about with, with young women, um, one of the things that they don't get when the father isn't in a home is that that emotional intelligence to be able to make decisions in the area of decisions. Because a lot of times when it comes to making decisions, they make decisions emotionally, you know? And I always say men deal with facts. So we're, we're not so much on feelings, we deal with facts when it comes to making decisions. But that, all, that still stems from having a uh, emotional intelligence to be able to um, know when to use which emotion. You know, when to be angry, when to be upset, when to be sad, you know, and not mixing them all together. You know what I'm saying? So when you face a uh, something that may be a hardship, 
where it's, it's not a time to be angry, but it's a time to, to be steadfast. It's a, to, a time to be diligent. But because they don't always have that emotional intelligence, now they're sad. Now they're crying. because like, oh, this is hard. Well, life is hard. You know, so when you when you're talking to the young boys about, you know, just emotional intelligence and, and being able to know the difference and, you know, when to be emotional and how to control your emotions, what would be some of the things that, you know, you may share with them, especially when it comes to the area of, of anger? And, and that's real because, you know, with our black and brown boys and all boys, regardless of ethnicity, Anger is a problem. And it comes from, I think, sometimes culturally, not allowing young men to express themselves. So you tell a little kid, don't cry, be tough. But crying is a normal emotion. So they grow up with this anger and keeping everything inside. And as you know, they explode over time. So we talk about healthy ways to be able to express yourself through conversation, through drawing, through talking to people that you care about, and really having a better feel of when you get mad, how to get mad. Because there's a way to get mad, not to throw things, not to curse, not to scream, but through understanding. So having a high level of emotional intelligence can avoid a lot of things. And I think it's not really talked about a lot. It's not really addressed in most schools. So it comes down to people like you, myself, and others in the community bringing these things up so we can break the stigma and bad habits that are going down generationally. Yeah. Yeah. And I like one, one thing that you said, you said no when to, to get angry. Right. And so I, I like that because there, there was a scripture that says, be angry, but sin not. Right. And I like to bring that scripture to people because even in the scripture, you, it tells you, you have a reason to be angry, you know? So it lets you know, there are going to be some times, there are going to be some instances, there are going to be some situations that is going to make you upset. But the other side is that it's sin not. And the sin not comes in, which means it's how you react to it that makes it wrong. It's not wrong that you got angry, but what you did out of anger is what's, what becomes a sin, what makes it a sin. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. And so a lot of times we don't hear that or we don't recognize that other side. You know, we, we're quick to get angry, but we don't think so much about the sin not part which is the, how do we process this anger? How do we act out this anger? How do we show that we're angry without being destructive? You know, and whether that's in relationships, whether that's in friendships, whether that's even on the job, you know, um, we don't always have that, that thing to let us know the difference, you know? And so I like that you said that. And even I, I bring up scripture because I think one of the most important things that we can have in our lives is a relationship, you know, with, with God. And I know that's something that you believe in also, you know, so um, I have my viewpoints on it, but tell me what would be your, uh, your viewpoint on why that is so important, especially for young men. By having a spiritual base, your bad days aren't so bad and your good days are great. When you come to the realization that there's certain things you cannot control and there's something bigger than you, you start to understand your purpose. And I think a lot of things that are happening in the world is we're going inside of self. We're letting outside influences like social media, like YouTube, like television control us as opposed to looking inside or inward to the spirituality of guidance and direction. Because that also affects in how you treat other people whether it's the opposite sex or your peers, when you don't care and you think you run everything and the only thing that matters is money, control, and power, that's going to always be a problem, not just for you, but the generations to come. Definitely. And I, and I think that, and so my my viewpoint, uh, one of them, just, behind, just outside of having a meaningful relationship with God, but I think, you know, having a relationship with any quote unquote religion or religious base, it gives you a moral foundation. Absolutely. And so Absolutely. I think that's one of the biggest things that, that we're missing. You know, if we even go back to, you know, the whole takes take prayer out of schools, 
Well, that's where you're getting your beginning learning, right? When you first start going to school. And so when we had those, you know, 10 commandments or, you know, the golden rule and all of that coming up, that was how you built your moral base. Yes, we're not sir. even talking about education. We just talking about moral base as in how to treat people, how to talk to people, you know, love thy neighbor, things like that. And that's what we, we're missing now as a, as a society is that love for one another, that care for one another, you know, and we're so, you know, even with the, the social media, you know, everybody's quick to take their phone out to, you know, record someone in distress more quicker than they are to go help the person. That's a you fact. Know? And that's, a that's fact. because we've lost that moral foundation, you know, and, and I think that's really important. And that's why I, I really like the, the work that you're doing, you know, with the young boys, um, you know, to be able to start giving that to them, teaching them things like that, you know, like I said, it, not so much as, you know, going far off the, the deep end, you know, this is what happened when you get locked up or something like that, but just to catch them before they even get that far, you know, Absolutely. like you said, you know, tying the tie and, and those things like that, you know, I, I think those, those simple yet important uh, things have a big impact on your life because if you can't tie a tie, you can't wear a tie to to court, you know, or you can't wear a tie to uh, a wedding know, to a job interview. You know what I mean? Right, 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 right. right. <laughs> you know, and so it's those little something that simple can affect your life in so many different ways just because you don't know how to tie a tie, so you can't wear a tie, you know, or not a clip on, you know. Oh <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the worst. I don't even think they sell those in adult sizes. Yeah, yeah. We, don't, we, don't, we don't do clip-ons, man. We don't do clip-ons. <laughs> but another thing I know dealing with young people, and we deal with some girls occasionally as well, with the young men is the lack of guidance and direction causes them to make bad decisions. So their peers, they want to please their peers. They want to record something on social media. So we talk a lot about being responsible for you. And I think people forget that sometimes. And we notice that a lot of young men, when you talk to them, and you take the time out to talk to them as young men, not someone doing something wrong, not looking for the imperfections, but looking at the blessings they can provide to the world, they will listen to you. Now, it's a lot of work and it's not easy, but somebody's got to do it. And that's why people like you and I are here. We've been chosen and we're going to do it to the best of our ability. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Man, you know, I I, I was thinking when you, when you just mentioned that, because I, I know in my program, I always teach that it's two things that makes a man a man, right? From from going for a male, from a male to a man. And that's respect and responsibility. Yes, sir. And more so responsibility than respect, because if you can handle responsibility, you'll gain respect. You'll get the respect. You know? And so what I, I teach, you know, even when we start talking about decisions and, and making choices, and the one way that I teach it, you know, is you got decisions and then you got choices. Decisions are definite and choices are conditional. So if you make a decision, which is a definite, then you make your choices based on how they align with your decision. I love so, it. I love it. So if you are a married man, and I always give this one because it's the easiest to, to think of. If you are a married man and you make the decision that I'm going to be faithful to my wife, right? That's your decision, which means that's definite. That does not change. So your choice when faced with, you know, flirting or faced with a young woman who may come, you know, make advances towards you or, you know, find yourself even even if it's not someone making a vast for you, but just in an environment that may not be helpful to your marriage. So now you're faced with a choice. What do I do? Well, how does that choice line up with your decision? Because your decision, again, your decision don't change. So right. if this woman is being flirtatious, so what do, what's my choice? Am I going to converse with her or am I going to you know, kindly walk away? Well, how does that affect my decision? My decision is I'm going to be faithful. So whether or not this conversation leads that way, it has the possibility of going that way. So now I make the choice to walk away because my definite decision 
is I'm going to remain faithful. So and that's, that's how I, I teach it. Yeah. So that's how I teach it. Just when it comes to decisions and choices, you know, you make a decision first and then you stand on that decision and how your choices, as long as your choices align with your decision, you'll never go wrong. Absolutely. You know? Amen. I love it. I love it. Yeah, yeah. So, Mr. Toby, man, we we we've reached our time. I definitely try to uh try to get a good uh, thirty minute talk. I don't want to <laughs> hold up all of your time. Uh, so I, I thank you uh, for being on. I'm going to give you the let you have the last say um, to lead us leave us with some some words of encouragement. Uh, you know, however you want to leave us, and also give us uh, your social media. Um, and uh, information where someone can contact you to be able to work with you or work with your your program. So I'm gonna let you think it. Just think about how you want to leave it because I'm gonna let you have the last word uh, before we go. So uh, I told you guys, uh, the listeners, thank you guys for listening to hanging on for this long. I told you guys that I was gonna tell you how you could win a hundred dollars from the podcast, and that is by becoming our super subscriber entering our super subscriber contest so what does it mean to be a super subscriber that means you are subscribed to our youtube channel to our facebook page and to our spotify podcast all three you have to subscribe to all three and after you subscribe to all three you're going to text the word win to 866-326-0730 that's 866-326 0730. And when you do that, you will automatically be entered into the uh the super subscriber contest to win a hundred dollars from the podcast. And it's a random, it's a random contest, and it's an on go ongoing contest, which means it never ends, and you can win at any time, right? Yeah, so, I love it. <laughs> make sure you guys uh enter, do all three, subscribe to our YouTube page. Subscribe to our Facebook page and subscribe to our podcast on Spotify. Um, and also give us a rating. Let us know how we're doing, even on Facebook and on YouTube. You know, if you guys are enjoying the podcast, leave us a message to let us know, you know, um, and just encourage it. Give us a little encouraging words or give us some feedback that may not, you know, you don't like it. Tim, you don't like it. I'm, I'm not going to take it personal. I just work on it to make it better. Right. OK. Amen. So thank you guys for uh, tuning in. Mr. Randall, I'm going to let you have the last word again. Thank you very much for coming on. Thank you for sharing your time with me. Um, I'll let you have the floor. The floor is yours. Well, just to answer your question, people often say that they're not going to do anything because they can't change the world. But I always tell people, all you have to do is be the light wherever there's darkness. If If each of us does something where we stand where we are, change will come. So there's no excuses. We all have a part to play. You can't close your eyes. You can't say you don't want to be involved because one way or the other, we're all connected under God's eyes. So we have to do our best as a team to work together. As far as reaching out to me, first of all, let me just say, Mr. James, it was an honor and a pleasure. Thank you so much for allowing me to be on. Your podcast is incredible. The topics are amazing. For anyone that wants to follow us, please follow us at breakfast, the word breakfast, with our boys series on Instagram and Facebook. You can also follow me on social media at Randall E. Toby, and that's on Facebook and Instagram. And if you decide to support us, you can do it at the website, you can do it on social media, or you can purchase a copy of the book, Suited for Success, and all proceeds will go to us running the Breakfast with Our Boys program. It's an honor and a pleasure. I'm gonna see you in Chicago, hold me to that. And I thank you for being here, brother. You're a blessing. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate your kind words. We can't end it any better than that. Again, thank you guys for tuning in to the Deal to Heal with E. James podcast, where our mission is to help you to deal, heal, and fulfill. Deal with your problems, heal from the pain, and fulfill your purpose. Until next time, we'll see you guys next week. Have Goodbye, good. everybody. Hey, guys. I know you're enjoying the podcast. However, don't forget to join our text line at 866-326-0730. That's 866-326-0730. In order to receive text messages with new events and things that is going on and new episodes as they release. All right? See you in a minute. 
Thanks for listening to the Deal to Heal with E. James podcast. Remember to listen, like, subscribe, and share. This episode has been brought to you by Deal to Heal Teas. Put some inspiration in your situation. Wear an inspirational tea and be inspired all day. Let's go to Deal to Heal Teas dot my shopify dot com remember our mission is to help you to deal heal and fulfill deal with your problem heal from the pain and fulfill your purpose thanks for listening